We used to be in an era of um, Daniel Wilson just before us. Daniel Wilson, Daddy Shoki, Daddy Fresh, you know, people like that were in the scene. Blackie, uh, Oris Willicky, you know, you know, Mandators and all that. You know, so we were coming from a rich background, reggae, high life, Juju, Fuji, the one and only, uh, one of my mentors. Shino Peters, he came with Afro Juju, you know, so with that background, coming into when we came in, our music was rich. Then we are talking about, when we say then, we are talking about like, when we came out 1997, you know, came out as a group, Remedies, um, that group entailed of myself, Edward, you know, Eddie Remedy. Um, Idris Abdul Karim and Tony Tetwila. And uh, uh, the genre of our song is Afro hip hop music, really. And that's what, that's, that's today, that's what has that's diversified into Afro pop music and all that. But we came out as Afro hip hop and we came out with a hit song and a hit album, you know, Shakomo. Then it used to be funny, you know, because we, we're that generation that just came out from an awareness, a new awareness. That's why I called it a revolution when we came out in 1997, because there, there was this new awareness, there was this new way of doing things. You could call it the, the other. We used to be in an era of um, Daniel Wilson, just before us. Daniel Wilson, Daddy Shoki, Daddy Fresh, you know, people like that were in the scene. Blackie, um, Oris Willicky, you know, you know, Mandators and all that. You know, So we were coming from a rich background, reggae, high life, Juju, Fuji, the one and only, uh, one of my mentors. Shino Peters, he came with Afro Juju, you know, so with that background, coming into when we came in, our music was rich. A way of life, we had a culture, we had a dress code, we just had, you know, it was a new community, our music, when it came in 97, it came with a whole new community the whole new way of doing things. You know, that's why we called it a revolution when we came out. You know, so, but if you ask me to compare it with, with, the, with the order of things today, in the music today, I can still tell you that it is, we are still playing the same thing. It's just that lyrical content is different. I listen to Whiskey today, I still hear him, ginger, oh, ginger, ginger, oh, ginger. That's the same thing we brought back in those days. Afro hip hop, the blending of our language, our local language with the Western, you know, kind of production and with our beats, everything with our percussion met together, all make up Afro hip hop beats. You know, so if we compare them now, we will find out that we are doing well, they are doing well right now. The first one recorded was Shakomo. That was, that, was, that was the music that took over. That was the music that actually you know, took over and set the pace for every other musician that was going to come into the fold. You know, so it was Shakomo. We recorded Shakomo in Ray Power Studios. In fact, we had three studios, D-Cross Studios, Ray Power Studios, and Dolphin Studios in Surulere. So we had almost like four. Shakomo is unique because we had like four producers. You know, but the major overall producer was Benga away at the end of the day. You know, but we had Omololu produce inside that same song. We had Benga, where we had Papi, you understand? And we had um, uh, Chris Okoro. So we had four people that the jam went through before it came out. What do I miss? What do I miss? I miss all the shows. I think it was the shows that exposed us more. It was not just us recording and playing music for people to hear. Those people that were hearing the music had to see us perform those music to them on stage. So I think I miss all the movement, the shows, the traveling. For instance, my son, you know, almost got born in Notting Hill Carnival, you know, in London. That was when we were attending the Notting Hill Carnival by the end of every year. 
at a point in time in our lives, you know. So going there to that carnival, that carnival was grand, big carnival, known all over the world. You know, it was almost like a black carnival, you know, where all our music, all our songs were showcased. And we had a crowd, our crowd. We're talking about more than 100,000 people on the streets. I'm sure you know the carnival, nothing new carnival. And then this Calabar carnival too came up, started here in Nigeria. And when we attended, it was great. You know, thank God I started in our own time too, you know, and it was really great. So I miss all the movements, all the shows, all the traveling in the tours. You know, when every time you have to come out with a, a new album, you have to be set to go on tour with that album, or else you have not promoted your album well. People have to hear it from everywhere, not just Lagos alone. Back then, it was different from how, what happens now. What happens now is like everybody is around the artist right now. The artist has a makeup arti artist, he has a chaperone, he has a PA, he has a manager, he has a promo manager. So he has people all around him to prepare him even before he gets off that stage. Back in our days, ah, it was hard work, you know, it was hard work. We, it was like we had to do everything by ourselves. We had a manager, that's what we had. And in the capacity of a manager, you won't expect your manager to start running, 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 running all over the place. He would still go all over the place for you, but it, 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 was, it was different. The manager was the only sole person that was allowed to prepare you before you get to your stage. We never used to have enough um, uh, makeup artists that could just dab, 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 dab us and take care of us again and you know, refresh us and we get up stage. We, do, we didn't have that. We had our manager who probably would have an assistant because back then we had, I must talk about Boyega uh, shooting the crisscross. He was the assistant to Bengawe. He would, he's the one that would take that pain to bring a towel and probably dab my face. You know, or give me a towel, go on stage with these towels. That's how we got used to white towels, Idris and I. Remember, we used to put them all, all over our head. You know, that's how we got used to. We, this, we were doing those things by ourselves. So we had a towel to dab our face already, hanging on your neck. These days, you will have a chaperone or somebody, a PA, holding on to that towel. When you finish what you're doing, off camera, he dabs you, you're back on camera, and things go on. to become a hit again, to be relevant again. Wow. To be relevant, um, from our researches, we found out that we, we collabos are, you know, raising a lot of eyebrows these days. So I think the first thing is the collabo thing. You yeah, collabo with most of the contemporaries, the guys that are on, uh, the way they say it in Yoruba, Antoba Lori Bansi. You know, you have to collabo with them. The, the likes of Davido, the likes of Leo Kesh, the likes of Wizkid, Fino, you know, um, and so on. Flavor. I, I think I'm calling my favorite guys. <laughs> you know, but those are the kind of guys that you need to work with right now because they are setting the pace in the industry and you probably need their fans to turn their eyes on you too. So it'll be nice to do a, a couple of collabos with people and then I believe a lot in internet promotion, you know, because with the internet, you know, we live in the jet age right now. The internet is moving fast. People get to know you immediately from just viewing you or viewing things you do on net through via Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and all that. You know, so social, social network is helping too. And then one must endeavor to have the record label back you up. I think it's better, the video or whiskey. Do you know that's what I never do in this industry? I never compare people. I've learned not to compare people. If you look up in the skies, like in the sky, our normal skies, I hear that we have, you know, we have enough stars in the skies that's more than the sands of, if you join all the sands in the whole world together, sands in everywhere, the beaches, everywhere, if you join them together, it's not more than the stars that's up there in the sky. That's something I discovered just recently, about six months ago. So you see, it's never enough. Davido is satisfying, you know, a multitude of people. He's satisfying a lot of people. And if he's doing that, if he's doing that right now, it also means that Whiskey is satisfying a lot of people. Remedies was satisfying a lot of people. When Plantation Boys was satisfying a lot of people. Where do you put that? So everybody has their crowd and space. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why when I started, I used the stars. Everybody has their space. So the only thing that, you can, that can make you say, okay, one is an MVP more than the other. Most valuable is what we should be looking at. We shouldn't be looking at comparing them and just saying, when you compare them generally, you're comparing their music, you're comparing... No, we shouldn't be comparing them because they're both making waves, they're doing well. They're setting up bigger things in the industry. They're employing people. Come on, people are feeding from them. So if you go and ask those kind of people this kind of question, they will tell, ah, it is my man, no, David, this one will tell you, it's my 
Frank Wan, no whiskey, you would never get an answer. It, the best thing is to appreciate both of them at the level and what they are doing right now. Take, you know, Belinda, let me narrow it down. Belinda, Belinda, eh, 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 Belinda. Oh, Belinda. You want him more fair. I love you, Belinda, eh, Belinda. Oh, Belinda. You not so key. You have to do the business part. Belinda, baby. Now you are going to marry every time in my mind. I'll be watching Dom, Sam, Patrick, Mariam, Hola, Take Up, Catch Up, If You Want Tap, Hey, Oja, Vile, Grab the microphone, say Mini Man, and Boy, oh shit. Our rap went crazy then, you know, crazy back then. We used to pick words one after the other. And people used to be, you know, say, they used to say we were audible, they used to hear us very well. more to our music. Butter Boss.